the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing go for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet some by flaming tongues above praise the mountain fixed upon it mount of god's redeeming love here i find my greatest treasure hither by thy help i've come and i hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of god he to rescue me from danger bought me with his precious blood Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy cause above. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it from thy cause above. Um, good morning. Um, welcome to our service. It's the first Sunday of Lent, and um, my tablet that I normally use for music was fasting overnight, I hadn't realized, and so it has no power. Um, I thought I plugged it in and I hadn't. So I've borrowed some music from Stuart, so I'll just put that away like that and get the service sheet. Uh, notices for this week. So, um, coming up on Tuesday, uh, which is the last day of February, I think, 28th of February, um, then at St. Thomas's between 10.30 and 1.30, there's our warm hub. Ten, did I say 1.30? I meant 12.30. 10.30 to 12.30 is um, the warm hub, and it's a place to to not only get warm um, physically, because we don't need that so much now, but it's a place where you can meet up, have a chat, do some craft, uh, finish off the jigsaw that I've nearly finished uh, down there, um, have tea and coffees and, and some soup, homemade soup. Um, so um, everybody's welcome to go to that on Tuesday morning. Then on Wednesday evening, we're having a, um, a, a service here at 7 p.m. And I think this week we're going to be looking at um, the way of the cross. So the stations of the cross. And um, so you're very welcome to that. And actually, I realized I had a very, a very important part in my Christian life um, was when I was... Um, another church and I head of the drama group and we decided to do something for Good Friday and so I had to study that because I had to write the scripts for the things and I've realized since I, at that time I went in a church that did things like stations of the cross and stuff like that but I now realize that what I did was follow the stations of the cross and it had a significant effect on my Christian life so if you can make it, that's here at 7 on Wednesday. And I think that's enough notices for now. Um, except to say Christine is still in hospital, uh, but they're hoping 
if all goes well with various tests and things, that she may come out this week. And I think she's, um, she's nagging to be out. Um, so I think that's it for notices. So Christine and Stuart haven't moved, so I'm guessing that we're okay. <laughs> that I haven't missed anything important. So let's um, just um, quiet our hearts. Realizing we're in the presence of the most high God and loving God. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to sing our praise with gratitude by singing, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransom he'll restored, forgiven, who like thee his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise Him still the same forever. So to chide and swift to bless. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, glorious in His faithfulness. Father, like He tends and spares us, well our feeble frame He knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, widely as his mercy grows. Angels in the height adore. Sun and moon bow down before him, dwell us all in time and space. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise with us the God of grace. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise with us the God of grace. If you'd like to sit. He is indeed the God of grace. And that grace has dawned upon the world with healing for all. So let us come to him now in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. And together we say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud 
like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to carry on in worship for that grace that has set us free. I sing in amazing grace, my chains are gone. Amazing grace. Okay, you've sorted that. You've sorted that right. If we were singing the original "Raising Grace," but you're singing it in three-four time, and this version's in four-four time. So when we get to the chorus, you'll get lost. So we're going to start again. in grace how sweet the sound that saved a wreck like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see T'was great that tore my heart to fear And great my fear relief How pray did that great appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace My whole sin. 
Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy Shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun fall back to shine. But God who called me here below will be. If you'd like to sit. Um, Eunice is going to come and give our first reading. reading is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 15. Sorry, Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17 and chapter 3, 1 to 7. You can find it on the on page 5 in the Pew Bible. Um, then the Lord God place the man in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and guide it. He told him, you may, you may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, except the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord God had made. The snake asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? Verse 2. We may... Eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, the woman answered, except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. Verse 4, the snake replied, that's not true. 
you will not die. God said, God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and, and what is bad. Verse 6, the woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its, its fruit would be to eat. He thought how wonderful it would be to become wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, and he, and he also ate. Seven, as soon as they had eaten it, they were given understanding and realized that they were naked. So they, sweet, they sewed fig leaf together and covered themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Michelle's going to come and give her second reading. Second reading today is from Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11, and can be found on page 6 in the New Testament at the back of the Bible. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After spending 40 days and nights without food, Jesus was hungry. Then the devil came to him and said, If you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, The scripture says, Human beings cannot live on bread alone, but need every word that God speaks. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, the holy city, set him on the highest point of the temple, and said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down, for the scripture says, God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up with their hands, so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. Jesus answered, But the scripture also says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in all their greatness. All this I will give you, the devil said, if you kneel down and worship me. Then Jesus answered, Go away, Satan. The scripture says, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left Jesus and the angels came and helped him. This is the word of our Lord. Let's um, pray. Father, as I speak, may we hear your voice and respond only to you. Amen. Jesus was tempted but didn't sin. Jesus was tempted but didn't sin. Jesus was tempted, but didn't sin. It's worth repeating because as I looked at this, I realized that over the years, both I and people that I've tried to help have made the mistake of thinking temptation itself was a sin. That because they were tempted, they were bad and cut off from God. But Jesus was tempted and didn't sin. It's not about the temptation. In fact, Jesus wasn't only tempted now. I think temptation followed him as it follows us all his life. For him, it was from Bethlehem to Egypt, from Egypt to Nazareth, to Nazareth to Jerusalem from Palm Sunday to the cross. Temptation was always there, as it is with us. So how do we deal with temptation? Now, I think this story of Jesus being tempted gives us three ways. Now, all the great preachers would have three points, all beginning with the same letters. I haven't quite made that very succinctly, but what I've got is dealing with temptation takes being rapid, having reference to God's grace, and being resilient. 
Let me try and unpack that a little bit. Rapid. The best way to deal with temptation is immediately. To respond to it immediately and say no. But I know in my own life, and for me, quite often what happens is I play with the temptation. I allow it to stay there for some time. Play with those ideas. Let me try and give an example. Somebody upsets me. And I have anger. But rather than dealing with that straight away, I'm forgiving the person or confronting them and sorting it out. I'll play with the idea of what, how things might go badly for them and well for me. Now, you're ob obviously a lot better people than me, so you probably don't do that sort of thing. But that playing a bit with temptation allows it to sink in and can even lead you to the sin. Jesus, at another stage, pointed out the, di the difference between the law and his way is that it went deeper. So, you might get angry with somebody, but you didn't murder them. So that's all right. But yet Jesus pointed out that, well, that's sin in itself. And then that's when we play with that temptation. When we don't say no straight away to it. We don't respond to it. We just allow it to fester within us and drag it down. In our New Old Testament reason, reading, if Adam and Eve had turned to the stake and said no straight away and didn't pay any attention, it would have been done with. So, a rapid response is the best response. But it has to be a response that references God's grace. Now, Jesus responded with the word. He quoted the word of God to the devil. But the devil also quoted the word of God. So what the difference is? The difference is Jesus responded to the God of love. He was only interested in that grace and that loving relationship with his father. And that's what we've got to get hold of. But to do that, we've got to know the story of God's grace. Jesus could quote the Bible because he'd read it. He'd read the scriptures. They were there deep down. And so I'd encourage you to read the Bible. And actually, I'd encourage you, if you've never done it, to do one of those courses that takes you through the whole Bible. You can do them, they take you through the whole Bible in a year. You don't spend much time each day. But you've read, then read the whole Bible. And then it's stored inside. So your brains are fantastic. I don't know if you know this, they're fantastic. Mine doesn't work that well sometimes, but it's... Everything I've ever read and everything I've ever seen and everything I've ever heard is stored in here. In the library of my brain. Including the Bible. Now there may be times when I go, I don't know where that's from. But I'm fairly sure the Bible says this. Because I've read it. It's there. And God, Holy Spirit, can remind me of it. And I can say with confidence, I'm sure this is God's word. The other reason why it's important to read big swathes of the Bible all the way through is the story of God's grace is there all the way through. And if we concentrate on our favourites... And only our favourites, we don't get the full picture. And we can even make mistakes about how to live with grace. And to successfully repel temptation, 
we need to be living in God's grace. And our response be based on God's grace and his word. So we do it re rapidly and we do it with reverence to God's word and we do it resolutely because temptation doesn't just give in. The devil in our story today didn't go, oh, Jesus is obviously not, I mean, Anna, he's really hungry and he's given in, so I might as well go home now. He kept pushing. He kept pushing. And temptation is like that with, for us. Temptation will be with you your whole life. From when you're born to when you die, temptation will follow you and whisper to you all the time. So you have to be prepared to be resolute, to be ready. Not beating yourself up because, oh, I thought I'd dealt with that and it's come back again. As sometimes it's happened to me thought I'd cleared off one sort of temptation and then some years later it's there again rearing its ugly head we need to be ready to be resolute as we repel God, the temptation and walk in God's grace and the really exciting about, thing about that is that God's made a promise to us that we won't face temptation that we can't stand against. As long as we trust in him. As long as we quickly deal with temptation as it rears its head. As long as we do it with reference to God's grace. As long as we are resolute. And stay and worship God and God alone. And follow him and him alone. Then we will be able to stand against temptation. And then we'll have the peace and the joy that comes with that. Because just like when Jesus stood against temptation... Angels were sent to tend to him. God is ready to tend to us and our needs as we stand firm for him and resist that ever-present temptation. As we allow God to speak to us, um, we're going to sing a song. It's a song of repentance, really. And to some extent, it's here because this is a personal prayer for me. Because one of my temptations is that I get sucked up with the wisdom of men and ideas rather than the grace of God. So we're going to sing, I have made you too small in my eyes. you too small in my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in a lie, but you were unable to heal me, but now, oh Lord, I see my wrong, heal my heart 
and show yourself strong and in my eyes and with my song oh lord be magnified oh lord be magnified be magnified oh lord you are highly exalted and there is nothing you can do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified i have leaned on the wisdom of man oh god forgive me and i have responded to them instead of your light and your mercy but now oh lord i see my wrong heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my eyes and with my song oh lord be magnified oh lord be magnified be magnified oh lord you are highly exalted and there is nothing you can do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified be magnified oh lord you are highly exalted and there is nothing you can do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified we're going to magnify the lord now by saying together the nicene creed We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you'd like to sit as we come to our intercessions. Almighty God, who has poured out your love and grace upon this world through your Son, Jesus Christ, and is here now with us by your Holy Spirit, we lift to you our prayers. Father, we pray for our world that has given in to the temptations of power and money. Lord, we pray for where that has resulted in wars, especially for Ukraine today, as they spend one year since the start of the present war. But we remember those other places too. where people have been tempted to seize power over others by violence. We pray also for the, those who are hungry, those who are oppressed, as others take more than their fair share, as they give away to the temptations of fear. Father, we pray that you will move the hearts of those who have power and lift up the heads of the oppressed so that everybody who lives in this world can be confident of where their next meal will be had. And Lord, we pray for those who are ill, whether they be ill in their bodies or their minds. We pray that they would know your comfort, that they would know your healing, that they would discover your peace and your joy. And for those that grieve, Lord, well, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit as a comforter to help them through that grieving process and that they may discover the hope of life that resides in you. And lastly, Lord, we pray for your church. We pray for ourselves that you will give us the grace to resolutely repel temptations and shine as a light to your glory wherever we travel. Amen. We're going to carry on in prayer by praying for the area of the Sheffield Diocese together by saying together the, the diocesan prayer. Living God, 
Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom, and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our last song is a prayer. It's a prayer that um, we might focus on God rather than the temptation. It's Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else but not to me, say that thou art. Be thou my best thought in the day and the night. Both wake and sleep in thy presence, my life. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word, be thou ever with me, and I with thee, Lord. Be thou my great Father, and I thy true Son. Be thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Be thou my breastplate, my soul for the be thou my whole armor, be thou my true might, be thou my soul shelter, be thou my strong tower. Oh, raise thou me heavenward, great power of my power. Riches I need not, no man's empty praise. Be thou mine inheritance now and always. Be thou and thou only the first in my heart. O sovereign. treasure thou art. I, King of heaven, thou heaven's bright sun, oh, grant me its joy after victory is won. Great heart of my own heart, Whatever before, 
Still be thou my vision, O ruler of all. Still be thou my vision, O ruler of all. Still be thou my vision, O ruler of all. And may God give to you and all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon us all, now and forever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And I think there's tea and coffee and biscuits and everything else in the back for you to enjoy. God bless you all.